Hey everybody, what's up? If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel. Here we talk a lot about bridging the gap between mental and physical health. And today I have a special guest, Dr. Lindsay Elmore, who is a board certified pharmacist as well as a natural medicine expert and host of the Lindsay Elmore Show, which I was just on not too long ago. It's an awesome show. I will link that below so you can check it out. But we are going to dive in to something that for some strange reason has come become kind of controversial mm. and it's essential oils. I yeah. want to get down to the nitty gritty today. I want to get the truths. I want to get the myths out of the way. Are you ready to do that? Let's dive in. I'm so excited to be here with you talking again, Manda. I am. I love you guys so much. Oh, um, thank you. You're always a joy to work with. Hey, First piece of like mental health and essential advice. Be nice. <laughs> it's that nice is life so much easier. That is the best life advice ever. It's just don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Whether you're wearing lavender essential oil or no essential oil, just don't be a jerk. Yes. Awesome advice. Exactly. Do you believe though, as a doctor, as an expert, that uh, essential oils can have a positive effect on our anxiety or uh, stress, depression, mental health in general? Well, here's my thing. The way that I think scientific evolution works as far as like, how have we gotten to where we are as humans today is we have a course of repeated behaviors that we in general are like, okay, this is pretty good for me. And then we have other behaviors that we understand are destructive, which I think is kind of that meeting of balance in, in mental health and spiritual health and emotional health is like, which way are you going to lean? Are you going to lean in to those good behaviors or are you going to lean in to the bad behaviors? And when you go one way or the other, your brain gets coded to kind of crave one or the other. And so I think about essential oils. Essential oils have been around for 5,000 plus years. So thinking about the way that humans work, if they didn't do something really positive for us, they would ultimately be destructive in a much more profound way than they have the capacity to be. We would have learned from our ancestors sitting around a campfire, like, remember that guy and his wife that used the essential oils and died instantly? Yeah. Don't do that. Don't distill those plants. But instead, we have this amazing culture of crafting distillation techniques and really magnifying the, the, the number of plants that we're able to extract compounds from. Now, as with every plant material, there is a limit at which it, of course, becomes dangerous because you, you make beer and you make wine and you make, you make opioids, um, at least some opioids from plants. But there is a moment where they have this profound quality where they can have healing abilities but as with anything in excess, anything becomes an addiction. You know, if it, if it is, I heard somebody say on the one hand, nothing is an addiction. And then on the other hand, everything, everything. Yeah. is an addiction. It's all in what you, it's all in that balance of light and dark and meeting in the middle. So specifically to your point, how do I think that essential oils impact our mental health directly? Well, essential oils engage with a very ancient portion of your brain. So any of our listeners right now, if you've got an essential oil, grab one. If you don't, go grab a spice from your spice cabinet. Grab some cinnamon, grab some clove, grab some oregano. When you inhale an essential oil or a spice or a flower that has um, aromatic chemical constituents like a rose or like a geranium or like trees, people go out and they, you know, they earth and they forest bathe and all the things. You do that. So when you're inhaling and you're inhaling the forest, inhaling the flower, inhaling the spice, inhaling whatever it is, you are taking a whiff in, and when you take that big breath in, 
it goes into the top of your brain and generates an electrical signal that then goes across the base of your skull and engages with your first cranial nerve, the olfactory nerve. Then those chemical signals and those electrical signals get sent into an ancient portion of our brain called the limbic system. Well, the limbic system is really, really important for emotional stability, stress management. It's very important for relational stability as well, where you're attracted to someone and then the correct signals get sent to the frontal cortex that also indicate like, okay, this is a good other person. And then there's also the amygdala, which sends out like panic, panic functions. And all of these can be very important in our dopamine pathways, which of course is the core of addiction and the withdrawals from the dopamine pathways. Very important for our balance of our cortisol, our sex steroids. It governs so much of whether or not when we engage with a stressor that we go into panic mode or whether we go into like the, okay, that's a stressor. Well, let's talk about that rationally and let's figure out what we need to do without having that guttural response that can sometimes send you spinning and get you into those bad habits. And so that means that simply by inhaling essential oils, you can engage those ancient portions of your brain, which also send projections to all different parts of your brain, but really your frontal cortex, which helps you to rationally process information. Another really cool thing is the body's not stupid. It's not going to waste energy because that's not evolutionarily feasible. We have to conserve energy. That's why everybody these days tends to put on weight because we're eating foods that are like, oh yeah, we got to, we can serve all that. We can serve all that. The body's not stupid. So all of the same receptors that are up in your brain that are sensing the chemical constituents within essential oils are also widely distributed throughout the entire body. So if you, you may have a sense of smell on your liver, in your stomach, on your skin, within your lungs, all of these different places because it's just one receptor. So people say we smell with our nose, but we really smell with our whole body, which allows those relaxation signals to be transmitted through our nervous system, as well as any chemical constituents from essential oils, which might be ingested or applied to the skin to also be like, oh yeah, I remember that molecule. You know, I, I know that when, when this is going on, I can um, relax. At the opposite end of the spectrum for any of the listeners that struggle with depression or seasonal affective disorder or PMDD, any of those disorders, there are also essential oils that you can use that are uplifting, that are bright, that are encouraging and comforting. There are essential oils that are just so comforting as well. Things that are so gentle like palmarosa. And so we not only are able to help to stabilize our stress response, but we're also to you able to use different essential oils throughout the day when we're looking for different responses. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but your sense is the number, or I'm sorry, your scent is the number one sense connected to memory as well. So it will over time continue to trigger kind of that, uh, that notion that, oh yeah, this was comforting. Oh yeah, this helped me through that. Oh yeah, this, this had done this for me at that time. So over time using it repeatedly, you're going to kind of condition your brain into, yes. yes, the comfort zone. Absolutely. So, I mean, this is why when you smell cinnamon rolls baking that you're like, oh, that reminds me of like Christmas morning or um, y'all, I went to a mall last week. It was the most amazing <laughs> thing. I It was such a, just an amazing blessing. I was there with a good friend of mine. The mall was packed. It was still playing Christmas music. And it was just such a comforting moment. And I remember we rounded the corner and I was like, 
smells like Cinnabon. Yeah. Everybody knows what that smells like. Right. Another, another chain restaurant that I think a lot of people can relate to smells like Subway. Yep. As you know that smell. You can't pinpoint it, but you know the smell of Subway. Yeah. Actually, funny you say the mall, because I remember back when I was in that really deep depression. One day, I have no idea why, I just had this really strong urge to go and sit in Hollister. Didn't want to buy anything. I just oh. wanted to go into Hollister. And I realized yeah. for some reason I found the smell of the store comforting. And yeah. I asked them, what is it you spray in here? I need to know what you spray in here. Uh, and I tried to get the, the perfume, but over time, start giving me headaches. And yes. I wanted to touch on that for a minute. While scent is attached to memory, it can be attached to dealing with stress and anxiety. If you get these synthetic perfumes or these synthetic chemically concoctions of God only knows what, that's not going to have the same effect as an essential oil. Can you tell us a little bit about why? Well, let's be clear. Essential oils can cause headaches in some people sure. because scents of all kind are known to be migraine triggers. However, let's take migraine off the table since that's a specialized situation. Um, and if you do struggle with migraines, I know so many people do, especially women around the time of their period. On the Doctor's Pharmacy podcast just the other day, I was listening to how to heal migraines from the ground up. Strongly recommend it. Amazing. And so when you think about fragrances, such as those found in lotions and serums and scented candles are some of the worst offenders, because not only do you have those synthetic chemicals, but then you're burning them into the air. Those make me and, sick. Oh, the, the, I mean, I think back to department stores when I was young. And every time I walk through them now, not only am I completely overwhelmed by sensory overload, because I'm like, why are there so, why is there so much consumerism coming at me? But I also take a step back and go, wow, remember when I thought this smelled good? good. Remember when I thought this smelled good? To me, um, other, other big offenders, just to round out the list, Plugins. Anytime you're combusting toxic materials, as my, I think, ninth grade teacher told me, he's like, guys, don't smoke tobacco because it's not like burning a plant and inhaling it into your lungs is a good idea, you know? And so if you're burning toxic substances, it's going to inevitably create more carcinogens and create more toxic compounds. So I think women think a lot about lotions, serums, soaps, as well as uh, cosmetics and perfumes, but also keep in mind a lot of synthetic fragrances are in laundry detergents, in cleaners, in all kinds of soaps that we use around our household. And the worst part about fake fragrances is the most vulnerable populations are the most at risk. So infants, children, and pregnant women. That is because the carcinogens, the allergens, the respiratory irritants, all of the endocrine disruptors, the neurotoxins, and the um, toxins that aren't necessarily bad for us, but get out into the environment and become more toxic, they bioaccumulate up the food chain. And so if you have a house that's full of toxins and then you get pregnant, they get passed on to the baby. Then the baby comes into this home that is full of toxins. The child then keeps taking on these toxins. And because their bodies are more sensitive to the total cumulative effect of environmental toxicants and corporate toxins to call them a spade a spade, um, this puts our most vulnerable populations at risk. So why are essential oils a little bit different? Well, number one, when you use an essential oil, you're going to be using a small amount of it. You're not going to be using 
huge, like huge amounts of chemicals throughout your home to utilize essential oils. Your, your nose would not be able to stand it. You would have the windows open. You would have the fans on and you, you would get a headache. Have you ever broken a bottle of essential oil? I have. And it is an experience. Yes, I know. If you ever break a bottle of essential oil, let me give you some hints. Get some paper towels or cloth towel. If you're um, going zero waste, get all of it in the towel and then put it in either a glass container or a Ziploc bag. And that way, at least you can keep all that essential oil in an airtight container. And then you kind of take the towel out and like waft it around the house and then put it back. You know, I mean, it's, it's a simple way because essential oils are and should be expensive. You pay for what you get. And the essential oil market has become so um, so marketable that so many people are like cutting corners and like buying cheap oils, buying really, um, crappy fractionated oils, buying synthetic oils. And so be sure that if you do get a headache while using essential oils, it can be due to one of two things. One is an oversaturation. Like as you would do if someone farted in your car, (laughs) open the windows. If you're getting a headache, open a window, turn on a fan. If you have migraines, you probably do want to do some pretty gentle test runs because you don't want to trigger a migraine using your, your favorite essential oils. The third thing I think that people can keep in mind is if you're having a headache and you don't think it's from an oversaturation and you don't think it's a migraine trigger, you've got to look at what is the emotional conflict that's happening somewhere in your body in response to this aroma. Maybe that is something that you could meditate on. And if you don't uncover anything there, then just wipe your hands of it and say, this is not the essential oil for me. And there's no shame in that game. There's a couple that were like that for me that just made me feel very nauseous or would just give me mild headaches. But ironically, there's an essential oil blend that I started making that really helps with headaches. If I put it right here on the nap of my neck, it will help me. I'm getting headaches, especially headaches from stress or headaches because it's, it's my cycle. My question is, is if someone came to you, say a client came to you and they confide in you that they're having symptoms of anxiety or depression, aside from obviously uh, in conjunction with their, their other treatment, whether by you or another uh, professional, are there any essential oils that you would suggest for them or that you would, would kind of be your go-tos? Well, I think it goes beyond just the discussion of essential oils. So let's talk about like, what is the total body picture of managing anxiety, managing depression, managing um, bipolar disorder, whatever. It comes down to your entire lifestyle. You know, I think that everybody is like, what's the one shot answer? There's not one. There's not one. And I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it genuinely does come down to what do you eat and how do you eat it? Um, what is your exposure to toxins and how well can you detoxify them? How well do you exercise? How well do you sleep? How good are your interpersonal relationships? And perhaps underlying all of those is how do you manage your stress response, which throws all of these out of whack. So you could be generating some inflammation from your diet. You could be generating some excessive body fat, which is generating some insulin resistance because you live a sedentary lifestyle or because of your diet. You could be exposed to environmental toxins that are known neurotoxins. So you may be sitting there like, why do I feel so just off or, you know, um, for lack of a better word, and I'm sorry if this is offensive, but why do I feel so crazy? Why do I feel so crazy? You may have neurotoxins that you have been exposed to in the water, in the air, in lead paint, in, 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 you know, we, we've gotten rid of a lot of lead, but a a 
tiny bit of lead will do you. Yeah. And oftentimes the symptoms don't come out for 10 or 15 years and you're chasing this rabbit hole of eczema and gastrointestinal disorders and mood disorders and there's nothing that's there that's like what is the root cause of this so you have to look at the whole lifestyle so where do i think essential oils can enhance these big pieces of lifestyle because i genuinely believe that essential oils enhance all of the areas of lifestyle that have to be addressed. So let's start with sleep, just because I think everyone could sleep a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and it's so critical because especially for mood disorders and mental health disorders, if you don't sleep, your brain does not detoxify. And so detoxification and sleep are, are very, very tightly interwoven. So we're going to start with sleep. Think about things like lavender, like bergamot, like clary sage. If you want some more masculine aromas, you can consider things like um, spruce oils or pine. You can consider fir oils, basically any oil that comes from a tree, right? Um, can be some of those more masculine aromas that are a little bit more calming and relaxing. When I think about exercise and how do I, number one, create the habit of exercise, use essential oils as part of the routine. You know, I think about Michael Phelps. When he was at the Olympics, the morning he woke up to go swim, he knew his exact routine, one step at a time. So if essential oils like you, it, so let's say that you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go for a one minute run. I haven't exercised in a year and I'm going to go for a one minute run, one minute. And you say, okay, I'm going to take 30 seconds ahead of that exercise. And I am going to apply some eucalyptus to my chest. I'm going to put some peppermint on my forehead. So I feel the invigoration of the cold as I'm running, or maybe you're somewhere that's really hot. And so you're like, and then I'm going to apply some peppermint under my arms. So I, so it feels at least cold while I'm sweating. You can also think about, okay, I did my one minute run, you know, and then guess what the best news about that is. Then you get to tell yourself like, I'm a runner. You did it. You ran for a minute. You are a runner. So now go run for a minute and 10 seconds tomorrow. After you're done, maybe you sit down and you go, you know what? I'm also a stretcher. And you're going to sit down for one minute on the ground and use essential oils that are powerful for your musculoskeletal system, like cypress and like marjoram and basil and, and, and peppermint even is another one if you're there and you, so peppermint, if you want to use it for the musculoskeletal system, you apply it last. That's your thing. So a lot of the oils that get on the skin for the musculoskeletal system are very hot on the skin. So you have to be a little bit careful with them, especially if you're someone who is prone to eczema or psoriasis or rashes, or if you know that you're very sensitive to fragrance, or if you just have a lot of allergies, if, if ever an essential oil is hot on your skin, you always add fatty oil like coconut or olive oil or almond oil, or even vegetable oil. If that's what you have, you can also apply that peppermint last on top of all those hot heating, warming oils, and that's going to help to cool things off as well. You can also, it is controversial, but if you choose to, you can also include essential oils in your dietary routine. So when I think about that, I think a lot of people get very nervous, but my general rule of thumb is number one, a tiny bit goes a really long way. Um, essential oils smell really good, or at least reflect the smell of the plant 
many of them taste very, very bad. Like so, vanilla. I always remember that with vanilla when you're baking. It tricks you because it smells good, but then you're like, oh, what is that? Yeah, I know. Well, a lot of that is because it's in like really cheap alcohol. So look for the quality of the vanilla that you're getting. And when it comes to, but your your response is exactly right. Like if you put three to four drops of oregano oil into a pasta sauce, get ready to potentially throw that pasta sauce away, especially if you're layering on basil and this and that. So that comes to my second rule of thumb, which is if you identify it as a food, then it chances are it is okay to ingest in very, very small quantities. Essential oils become very rapidly toxic. Going back to where we started, everything is an addiction and nothing is an addiction. They become very rapidly toxic when you consume them in excess. So remember, we're talking drops here, or you're talking about taking a toothpick and then swirling it into your brownie batter or swirling it into your pasta sauce. You can also, I know I mentioned many of the savory oils like oregano and basil and thyme. You can also think for your sweeter foods, um, you can think more about orange oil, cinnamon oil, akatea is an amazing one. Throw those into smoothies, et cetera. Or if you're having one of your special treats, it's not a cheat, it's a treat. If you're having a special treat and you're having something that's very sweet with some refined sugar in it, think about lemon and think about those warming spices that you associate with what you would normally put in food. So that covers three of the big ones. And the last one that I think is really, really important is, is, is the stress response. The stress response is really big. I mean, relationships are important too, but I think the toxicity of relationships goes well beyond right. essential oils. You yeah. may like somebody more because they use essential right. oils or you and your husband may, may bicker because you love essential oils and he does not keep trying. Eventually there's going to come a day where he's like, I don't know what that just was, but never let it out of the house again. Um, but when it comes to the stress response, essential oils can take your relaxation techniques to the next level. So I'm currently reading a book which has a protagonist in the book who struggles with agoraphobia. She's gone through some kind of trauma that has not been revealed in the book yet, but she hasn't been out of her house in about 10 months. And I, I think about her when I think about how essential oils could be used to kind of break the patterns of toxic thoughts. And so when she tr goes outside and struggles to go outside, she counts one, two, three, four, five. Well, essential oils are going to give you that headspace of like, all, all I have to do is inhale this oil and count to five and allow myself to feel the fear. Cause I think that's critically important in overcoming emotional disconnects with your body is you have to feel the gnarly emotions because they're there to protect you. They're there to protect you. And you just say to them, thank you, bless you, get out my life. I'm in the driver's seat. I, I heard, I got this. Yes. I heard somebody say one time that she had crushing anxiety and she decided she was going to go on a road trip. She was just like, dang it. I'm doing this. I'm going on a road trip. So she invited her anxiety to ride in the back seat. And she was like, I understand that sometimes you're going to tap me on the shoulder, but I'm driving. Yeah. And she, she did a road trip. And so I think that essential oils can help to improve a daily meditation practice, which strengthens your resilience to acute stressors when they happen. 
they also, if you do start to devolve into those ruminating thoughts, or if you're running through a conversation that you had with someone else over and over and over again in your mind, or if you're someone like me that like an hour after an argument was like, oh, that would have been the best comeback. So me. The time now I do it too, all the time. I, all the time. Stop that thought in its tracks regain control of your frontal lobe because you know how we say people flip out okay that is actually a very biologically correct interpretation because when we are thinking and rational and our kid is pitching a tantrum on the floor or the pet is misbehaving or if your partner does something that ignores you that annoys you if you're in your frontal lobe, you're like, hey, bud, we can't pitch a fit in the floor. Or you take the kid, you sit him in the car outside of the restaurant, and you go, you can scream as long as you want. When you're done, we're going to go back in and finish our meal. You know, you allow, you don't get engaged. You know, you don't allow your three-year-old's emotions to dictate yours. yours. Yes. And you don't allow your partner's emotions to dictate yours. And I think when you gain control of that emotional response through meditation, through breathing exercises, through using essential oils to create a consistency and pattern and um, ceremonious, that's the word I'm looking for, a ceremonious effect with it. That is the way that essential oils can help to enhance not just like I don't want to put you in the mindset of like, this oil will be the right. one for this because that's not the way biology works. But if you are truly dedicated and truly want to, as Amanda told me was her flip, she flipped out of her amygdala, out of that fight or flight response and flipped into her frontal cortex of being rational and actually wanting to make tangible changes in her life when she stopped and smelled the roses. So stop and smell the roses and like, don't flip back into your lizard brain of fight or flight where you go nuts. Allow it to say, okay, I'm feeling those emotions. I'm feeling those emotions. I'm feeling that anger. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. And then go, why do I feel this anger? Hmm. What, how do I want to manage this? How do I want to manage this anger that I'm feeling? Is this a situation where I need to just say this is beyond my boundaries and we're not going to do this anymore. And I got to move on and I got to start making plans for that. Or is this a moment where you say, honey, I love you. We got to talk this through because this behavior made me really, really angry. And that's an irrational adult conversation. You're not having that adult, that conversation with the three-year-old. Or do you stay kind of in that interim space where instead of fighter, instead of like, fight or rational, you're more in that, oh, well, I'll just go along with it. Or you're also in that, like, I'll just, I'll just become a workaholic instead. So I don't have to deal with this. So that's, I think, how essential oils can enhance so many areas of life, not just one. I think it's awesome that you touched on how there's so many different aspects because as we're talking about the interview and I'll link that below guys so you can check out our interview together and you know what we're talking about with the rose bushes so you're not in the dark there but there are so many different facets whether you're healing from cancer healing from depression no matter what your journey is there's so many facets of it and I think that's where the misconception about essential oils comes in is you have these people that have kind of turned it into a cult and they'll say this essential oil can cure cancer. This essential oil can cure depression. There is no cure-all, be it with mm. conventional therapy, be it with essential oils, be it with nutrition. There's not one cure-all for anything at all. Nothing. No, yeah. no uh, disorder or disease is going to have one cure-all. That's why, you know, you have your coaching method. I have my five puzzle pieces of happiness because that's what worked for me. These mm. pieces had to be in order. And if I would have just done one of them, it wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't have done anything. There has to be a balance. But I'm curious what you have to say to all of those people that make these claims and are posting it all over social media and kind of giving essential oils a bad rap. What would you say to those people or to the people that are seeing these posts? So 
let me clarify. Are you talking about the people that are haters or the people that are like, take this one drop cures it all? That's um, kind of more what I was going for is the people right. that are making ridiculous people, claims. For those people, I, I so strongly encourage you, stop trying to make life prescriptive. If there were one pill, one plant, one piece of grass, one food that every single person on earth could take to be happy, healthy, in stable, loving relationships, never struggle with pregnancy, never struggle with body weight, never struggle with hair loss, never struggle with mental health disorders, anything. If that existed, we would have found it and every single person on the planet would be taking it. Unfortunately, that's not earth. That's not how earth works. There is not one diet that fits every person. There is not one essential oil that is going to, in a prescriptive manner, heal everything for everyone. And essential oils are not one of those things where you go, hey, oh, I'm better. Right? That's not the way. My depression's gone. The cancer's My cured. <gasps> it doesn't work that way. It has to be a part of a totally integrated system where you look at how is my overall body functioning? You know, because I'm willing to bet if your brain's a little out of order, then your gut's probably a little out of order. Your routines may be a little out of order where you where you're doing whoop, whoop, whoop all over the place. Stop trying to make life prescriptive and stop trying, stop searching for the fountain of youth because this is going to sound harsh, but I promise you, if you listen to me, this is like power right here. Part of our human journey is accepting that we will die. It's part of the human journey. And it's what we do with our life here on earth that dictates what do people say about you at your funeral. Focus on that. How do you make the biggest impact over time? Or how do you make the greatest impact? internal impact, which is the big, it's not about reaching masses. It's about becoming such a beloved vessel that it flows to other people and it helps to inform other people. And it allows us all to reach the end of our days and go, oh my gosh, I lived a great life and I loved a lot of people and I intentionally worked on myself day after day after day after day. That's the key to happiness. And that also means if you have cancer, if you have migraines, if you have mental health disorders, if you have autoimmune disease, you can make it the best healing journey you've ever been on. You can say, this doesn't define me. Let's keep moving forward. So don't think of life as a pill for every ill or a diet for every ill or high intensity interval training for every ill or an essential oil for every ill. It's not the way life works. It's not the way life works. But I can attest to that, that there's something about taking your power back. There's something about owning what you can do to move forward in your healing journey, be it, as you said, with migraines, with cancer, with mental health, whatever. I went from the point of having a serious mental illness, addiction, two decades of clinical depression to being decertified, which I was told wasn't even possible. Uh, and now I, I'm living a happy life and I feel amazing. So Lindsay, thank you so much for taking the time to come on today and share your expertise with us and break these myths. Thank Everybody, you. I, yeah, absolutely. Guys, I want to know, we want to know your favorite essential oil, your favorite essential oil blend in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so we can keep breaking these myths and keep the mental health conversation going.
Absolutely. And hey, if you're brand new to essential oils, I have a free 26 video series available at yledclub.com slash jumpstart. So get your jumpstart on, start understanding essential oils at yledclub.com slash jumpstart. And I will link that below, guys, so you can check that out. That sounds awesome. I'm going to go download it right now. Thank you guys yes. so much. Thank you. Thank you.